Today on the Corner, KP3S Part 2. Let's get started. Hey everyone, it's Jeff. Welcome back to the Corner. We're going to continue modifying our KP3S this week. What we're going to do is, last week we installed the two fans, night and day with the noise. We're going to keep these fans, but we're going to replace the hot end and the extruder. So let's get at it. All right guys, so here we're gonna go over what we purchased and what we printed for this mod. So this beautiful carriage, and I'll link it below in Thingiverse because I forget the name of the person who actually uh, made this carriage, but it is beautiful. It uses the same blower fan that I have that we installed last time, and it's gonna use that uh, 4010 fan. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a V6 hot end now you can buy these off of Amazon, off of AliExpress. They're usually under about 15 bucks. They're for the clones. They're relatively cheap. If you want a genuine E3D, they're about 80, 80 bucks or so, I think. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to reuse the, uh, the heater block, the cartridge, the thermistor and the nozzle from what's inside the KP3S right now. So I think I'm only going to need this. Um, and the fan shroud, of course. So the rest of the parts have already been stripped from when you get it. You'll have to, if you get one like this, you'll have to install the thermistor and, or sorry, the, the heater cartridge and the thermistor will usually go in this little tiny hole here. Okay. And it's the fan shroud. So this is the new fan shroud that's going to go in and it's going to go like that. And then we're going to put that 4020 on there. This would come with a 30 mil fan I've already taken off. And this is a, um, a clone Bontech extruder. So I've already played around with this a little bit, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to see if you can wiggle this apart here. Now with these Bontech extruders, they usually come with a piece in here like this. Your filament's going to go in here and come out here. Do I have a piece of filament? Hey, hang on. I got a piece of filament here. So yeah, so what you're going to do is your filament basically goes through here, hits the gears, and you'll see the, the teeth move in here, but they attach to this on the other side, and this will feed your filament through. So because we're replacing the whole carriage system it's not a Bowden it's going to be direct drive just like on the kp3s we're going to just simply drop the e um, the v6 hot end or heat sink directly into this now what I've done is your um, your bond tech comes with a little piece of PTFE in order to um, just thread your filament through, or if you have a Bowden extruder, you can just hook that up. All right, so we'll go like that. Lock in place, nice and neat. We're not going to use that, but I did snip off a little piece, and I left it inside my Bowden. Or in, ugh, I snipped off a little piece of the Bowden, and I left it inside the heat sink here. So we're simply going to put this together like this. We're going to... Drop this together here. Um, nice and slow, apparently. Uh, where is the hole? There we go. And it should just... Uh, seal nice and neat like that. Um, you're also going to have probably a set of instructions in here. You're going to have some screws and some Allen keys. And basically, in a nutshell, this is going to go like this. And then the carriage is going to mount. And now we're going to use the hot end that came with it. So now we're going to start to take apart the, um, the carriage from the original KP3S. Uh, we're going to remove these two screws. And then that should take the entire carriage off. So they're on there kind of tight, so be careful you don't strip them. Okay. 
So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to remove the three screws that are holding the extruder on. As I'm going to point them out to you right here, take your time and try not to lose any screws. Now, as you're going to slowly work your extruder arm out, be careful and don't lose that spring. It has a tendency to jump and fly everywhere. And once you have the extruder arm removed, you will notice the fourth screw to remove the extruder assembly underneath the arm. You will now need to remove the two grub screws holding the gear to the extruder shaft. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the both fans that we installed on our previous mod to get ready for the new carriage. With the fans now removed, I prepare to strip down the rest of the carriage to remove the hot end. Although I didn't record it, I had previously heated up my hot end and um, loosened the uh, nozzle in order to get to this point where I was able to remove the heat block from the old V5 hot end and replace it with the V6 hot end, which is what I am doing currently. So what I'm doing now is I am test fitting to make sure I can get the hot end into the carriage and the Bontech extruder as well. Um, so it's you have to uh, slide the uh, the hot end in first and then attach it to the Bontech as shown. While placing the extruder gear on the stepper motor, make sure it's about 3 mils from the base. Now I am dry fitting the parts and checking out how I'm going to run the uh, thermistor wires along the side as well as realizing the original screws that came with the Bontech will be a bit too short so I did replace them out of some spare screws that I had. Finally, it's time to install the carriage. I will be removing the two screws on the X-axis linear rail. The, this little bracket here will hold the belt in place, um, and we will need to attach the carriage to that bracket to the linear rail. In hindsight, it would have been easier to start the assembly process by placing the carriage onto that linear rail first, then adding the extruder and the hot end. On to the fan assembly and some wire management.
on to my first challenge with this mod which is that the extruder motor is too large and it requires a pancake stepper motor otherwise it will hit the Z axis um, tower. I did solve this problem temporarily by importing the axis stop part of the model and cutting it down and then adding it to the end so I needed to make it about 10 millimeters longer I will lose 10 millimeters of bed space on my x-axis for now but until I get a pancake stepper but I think that's an okay trade-off to um, start tuning this mod with And now would be the perfect time to update your firmware. So you're just going to go into your Kingroo slicer and go about. And it should take you to the Kingroo website. Um, don't mind me, I'm just trying to screen record here. <laughs> um, and then there should be a download button. And this will give you links to the user manual the slicing software, the firmware, and the additional firmware with a 3D touch. We're just going to use the KP3S firmware for now because um, what you're going to have to do is adjust your e-steps for putting the new extruder in. I have a video on how to adjust e-steps. I'll link that down below in the comments. Uh, mine ended up being about 840. Yours will be slightly different. Um, you may also have to reverse the extruder direction as well. And those line items will be in this config file. I will just do an example for you right now. You'll scroll down until you find the directions. You'll change the directions from, I believe, 1 to 0. I believe you need 1. Um, in the end, you don't need to change this at all, but the e-steps you will need to change depending on what your model is. As I said, mine turned out to be 840. You will then save this file and you will move all the information onto an SD card to put into your Kingroon slot. You're then going to take your SD card, insert it into your printer, and you're going to reboot the printer. It will then flash the firmware. Oh, sorry for the light. This process should take about two minutes or so. And then your printer should be pretty close to where it needs to be. There we go. Done. So first test without L even tuning anything. Hey everyone, so that's it. She's all set up now. We got the uh, BMG extruder. We got the uh, V6 hot end installed. Um, now I am just basically, I've run a quick couple of prints without uh, really tweaking anything as far as retraction settings go and stuff. I don't know if you can see Mr. Bubba Fisk here and Rosario Dawson from The Mandalorian. Yes, so cool. Um, Look at that. They actually aren't too bad at all. So, um, I'm just going to basically um, start tuning in a profile, and really that's it. So, um, um, so yeah, so let's talk about pricing for a second. Um, so, the BMG cost me about $30. I think it's about maybe $22, $25 US. Um, the uh, V6 hot end was, I think I got it for 17, 18 bucks, so like 15 or so. So you're looking, but 
by the time you get the little bits and baubles, the screws and stuff like that, probably about $45 US to upgrade this machine to this particular setting. Um, you're, you're kind of getting into the range of a, uh, a starter uh, Ender 3 at that point in time for the price range. But hey, let's, you know, mod a machine, right? So this would be the next, um, after putting the fans on, which was a great start, the next step to this would be the BMG and the V6. Um, that's this round of upgrades for the KP3S. Um, Next round is going to be a little bit more technical. We're going to install Marlin firmware into here and we're going to put an auto level sensor on it. So stay tuned for that video. If you like this video, uh, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, uh, considering subscribing to the channel and uh, peace out.